Welcome to chapter one. We are looking at the very early origins of pianos, piano music, piano composers, and I have to tell you, there's no piano. Um, the instrument that we know today, with 88 keys, three pedals, that did not exist when keyboard music started to develop. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, there were other instruments that sort of led the way, and I think it's really fascinating to see how this all connects. So today, we're going all the way back to the ancient Greeks. The very first example of a keyboard instrument is called the hydraulis. This was an ancient Greek instrument which was kind of the ancestor to the pipe organ, although the sound was produced with water instead of air. So this, over time, became the church organ, the pipe organ. And of course, we play the keys and the pipes have air, and that's how the sound is produced. And some of the composers we're going to talk about today were writing for the organ. And like I said, some of that translates today, and we, we play it on the piano. As we get into the end of the 1500s, there are the first publications about piano technique. And this is a big step for us because when we talk about things like scales, chords, fingerings, like the things we talk about today, this is the very first, you know, structure for that, late 1500s. That brings us up to about 1600 or the Baroque era, which we are mostly talking about today. The Baroque era is from about 1600 into the 1700s, some people say until 1750 with the death of Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, at the very beginning of this chapter, I played... That's a notable piece of music from the Baroque era, and I'm sure you recognize it. It's the theme from the Hallelujah Chorus by George Frederick Handel. He was born in 1685, along with two other big names. One is Johann Sebastian Bach. You know that name. The other is Domenico Scarlatti. You might know it, you might not, that's okay. But he's important to the piano world. And the really interesting point about these three composers, born in the same year, in three different places in Europe. We have Scarlatti in Italy, we have Bach in Germany, we have Handel who moved from Germany to England. And they're all cultivating keyboard music, keyboard writing, performing, teaching, at the same time in three different places. And that really pushes us along, you know, in the piano world. Speaking of the context, think about what you know of art and history and culture in the 1600s. And just a few clues for you as you're kind of thinking. Women were wearing big dresses. Um, I, women and men, I think all, were wearing powdered wigs, tall hairdos, makeup, ornate fashion. Think of the architecture, think of the furniture. Things were almost overdone, exaggerated is a good word for this time. So the royal palaces, the gold and the mirrors and the glass, all through Europe, we're seeing the, the culture of more is more big outfits, big big paintings, big portraits. The music was living in that time and it was reflecting that time. It wasn't opposing it. So when we see these complicated polyphonic pieces, you know that word? Polyphonic means more than one independent voice. Um, think of a Bach fugue where you might have three or four or even five independent lines all working against each other. That's a very complicated type of music. So let's get to playing. In the Baroque era, we start to see music written in all keys. And I'm gonna talk more about that, but first, let's play this. It's a scale, it's five notes, and it involves steps, skips, and a chord. This is a warm-up that I have students do all the time. It's great for finger independence, it's great for working on rhythms and hand position, so we'll mention a few of those things. Listen to what I just played. Do you notice that I'm playing with kind of a flat, even tone? I'm not feeling expressive, and that's fine. I'm not using the pedal, and that's fine. This is all about getting your fingers to find different scales and I wanna explain why I'm doing this exercise in connection with our Baroque chapter, um, an early music chapter. Have you heard of equal temperament or equal tuning? Keyboard instruments were tuned with each note 
equal distance from the others. And then, of course, other instruments matched this as well. So violins were tuned a certain proper way and, and everyone played in tune, okay? So before this time, we were not all playing in the same tuning. This is important for us. This is where major and minor scales, we can all agree on the same thing and music sounds right. That arrangement of half steps and whole steps and, and sounding right to our ear is all based on this method of tuning. So that's why I'm connecting it with this time in history. It's a really big step forward. How many different major keys are there? 12. So as we move up, our next one is D flat. And we look for the same pattern, similar sound. Each of these pentascales is built with a whole step between the first two notes, another whole step, then a half step, and then a whole step. That's the distance from note to note. Whole, whole, half, whole. If you can remember that, you can figure any one out. From D flat, it sounds right. Notice that my fingers are tall, kind of resting on the black keys. I'm not using flat fingers. That's not gonna work here. Especially for that chord, I need to be up on the black keys. Next is D major. E flat, E, and so forth up the scale until I return to C major where I started. I would do that as a warm up every day, take a minute to get into all 12 major keys, go back through, check out some of the minors. It's easy to get from a major key to a minor in this warm up. You just change the third note. The third note of the scale is lowered a half step. So major, minor, I'm changing that middle note, half step lower, and I get my minor scale, minor chord. And today I'm gonna to teach you a little bit of one of the most famous pieces. It's Bach's Prelude in C. focus on the beginning of that. We'll look at about four measures and then honestly the same patterns apply to the rest of the piece. Lots of the same structures and fingerings and so I think you can go on from there if you want to. The beginning of this piece we are breaking up a C major chord. Let's just kind of place that for a moment. C, E played with your left hand. Right hand is playing G, C, E. And we're, we're rolling through that chord 